Alex, welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to talk about conserving or protecting your energy. I'm gonna give you a few tips on how to do this, whether that be like personally in your life or your interactions with others. One thing I've really come to learn is that although time and money are valuable, energy is so valuable. In terms of energy, it can be a valued asset like time or money, which you can either spend too much of, maybe you save it too much, or people take advantage of it and exploit it. On the flip side, your energy can also be changed. You may have a lot of positive energy that is suddenly derailed, then it won't matter that you have all this energy in the bank. We're gonna talk about how to protect that, how to conserve that, and I'll give you a few tips, a few examples. And listen, I'm not perfect. I'm still really dealing with this. This is why we're talking about it because it's a learning process for me. Let's get into it. The first one, which is probably one of the hardest, is actually setting boundaries in conversation. So if you have ever been stuck in a conversation that's going too long, so maybe you're supposed to be doing something else and somebody is just going, it could be a meeting, it could be casual, you're just like, please clue it up. Maybe it's a conversation about a topic that is just inappropriate or something you don't wanna get involved in. It's draining your energy, it's turning your positive energy negative and you wanna get out of it. Also, I'm from Newfoundland, I definitely said negative weird. Or maybe it's a conversation that is just not really a conversation you need to be involved in. Maybe it's a meeting you don't need to be a part of, or it's a conversation that doesn't have anything to do with you. Someone just wants to get heard, but you're not the right person for it. So setting these communication boundaries is a very tough skill that I've been developing. There are different levels to how you handle it. So you can do a soft approach where you say, sorry, I have to stop you. I have this to go to, or hard stop at this time. I have to go do this. You know, let them know that you're actually about to go somewhere and just hard stop. And listen, if it's a commitment to yourself, all you have to do is say you have an appointment. It doesn't matter if it's an appointment with you, you have an appointment, you have a deadline, make it known. If it's a text conversation, if it's online, you can mute the person. You can just send them a little message like, hey, I really can't read this right now or I can't participate right now. I'm very busy. I'm just not in the right place to talk about this right now. You mute, you move on. That's the easiest way. <laughs> One of the hardest ways is when you actually have to stop a conversation in its tracks and walk away. So I've been in conversations in more of my social life where it's very negative. I'm not interested in participating. And I have to say like, hey, not the vibe, I'm leaving. That is very hard for me. If I lose respect for you, I can walk away from anything. If I do respect you, it's a little bit harder. I tried to change the subject, but it's way more worth your energy to just say, listen, I'm not interested in participating in this conversation or listen, I'm not interested in having this conversation. Can we talk about something else? If it gets to a point where you have no control and this could be online or offline, you have no control over the conversation. They are not respecting your boundaries. You've tried these little hints. You've been straightforward and they're just not letting you move on. Block, <laughs> delete, walk away. Dramatically leave. I don't care. Don't give up your energy to make somebody else comfortable. If you have set hard boundaries and they're not respecting them, they don't respect you. You don't have to stay in that conversation. So just walk away, leave it, protect yourself. It's easier said than done, but it is way better to do that for yourself than to stay there to make them comfortable because you're gonna feel that very heavy on you if you stay. The next one is a little more personal. It's about creating a safe space that you can go to. So for me, I have my office. It's just so cute and perfect and safe and it's mine and there's no distractions. I can close the door and it can be private. And not everybody has that luxury. So your safe space could literally be headphones on, your favorite podcast, audiobook, playlist, headphones on, world out. Have your safe space to go to. When you're stressed, when you're overwhelmed, retreat to the space take a moment. Don't answer any texts, don't answer any, anybody, don't talk to anybody, take a moment. You need to have this safe space. I can relate to this a lot when I'm traveling, although usually if I stay in a hotel by myself, that becomes my safe space. When I'm out in public socializing a lot and I feel like I have nowhere to retreat to, I get a little bit anxious because I'm like, I don't know where I'm gonna decompress. So that's why it's also good to, even if you have an office at home, figure out how you can headphones on, maybe it's read a book, maybe it's just walk outside in the park. Figure out how to slow down, figure out how to decompress, pick your safe space. Resist instant reactions. I'm very bad for this, I'm so bad for this. I am a drama queen. It's a quality I don't love, I'm working on it. I'm very dramatic, so when something happens, I'm like, oh, it's the end of the world. Or there's an issue, I'm like, oh, this is gonna take me so much time. Or somebody wants to talk, I'm like, oh, it's gonna be a conflict, even though they might just wanna know what I have for lunch. You know, I'm very dramatic. And if I speak too soon, 
it can cause more harm than good. It escalates a situation. I'm escalating it in my mind. You have to hold back from that. So instead of instantly reacting, learn to stop. Maybe you have to write it down. Maybe you have to send a texture group chat, but don't send it. Maybe you have to like open your notes app, do something to get this like crazy rush of thoughts and emotions out. Because if you also just sit and stew in it, it won't make you feel any better. I've been there. I went for a walk around the lake and I've planned the email I'm gonna send like five times. And that's not really good for your energy either. This is where you really wanna practice journaling or even make like a notes app. You can use your voice app, talk to it, complain, do what you need to do. Get that instant burst of energy out, take a break, chill out, then answer. Because usually when you can talk through it, when you're not stewing in it, you have to realize that, oh, I'm just probably being dramatic, let's let it play out. Don't jump to conclusions, but also don't jump to a response. Even if somebody maybe saw that you read their message and they're like, hey, I really need to answer, just tell them you need a couple moments to collect your thoughts. They can't fault you for that. You have to be able to set that boundary with yourself and with others. Take your time. You can think on it. You can think on it. <laughs> the next, which we all know is so hard for me, stop saying maybe, stop saying check back in, stop saying I'll think about it and just say no. Like instead of just saying no to something, even though I already know I don't want to do it, I'm like, eh, if I can make it work, I'll think about it. And then that person has an expectation from you. They're still checking in. It's like you're redoing this conversation over and over. You in your heart already know that you need to say no. You need to end this conversation. You need to have this awkward or difficult conversation, but you've left that door open, which is your fault. I said it. <laughs> said it. Cause it's my fault. If you're telling someone maybe, they have every right to check back in with you. They have every right to reignite that conversation. But if you say no, that's your hard boundary. If they cross that line, you deal with it, but you've set your boundary. And let me tell you, saying no at the start is always way easier than trying to stick it out or having to break up the whatever it is or cancel whatever it is. As hard as it feels to say no at the start, it's always easier to say no there. Okay, now that the garbage truck is gone, let's talk about the next tip, which is limit your distractions. This is not like, I'm not telling you not to scroll on social media. What I'm telling you is to limit the possibility of getting your good mood derailed. So I used to have my freelancing platforms open 24 seven, Slack open 24 seven, every single notification out of my phone, like clockwork, every few minutes, I would get some kind of message notification, someone asking me to do something, you know, a request, it could be a complaint, it could be an issue, it could just be a good thing, but it's going to take time or it distracts me from what I'm doing. And because it's completely thrown a wrench in the work I was doing, it ruins my mood, it ruins my energy. There is something to say that I could relax a little bit, but the truth is I can't, not right now, I'm never relaxed with those things. So my tip is mute your notifications and set designated times to check them. You have no obligation to be checking your email 24 seven. Unless whatever you're doing is you're on call and you have to be ready at a moment's notice, there's no obligation for you to be like that. So make sure you limit your distractions. Right now I have all social media notifications muted. I have, all Slack notifications muted. I have all email notifications muted. Everything is muted and I check at certain times, which I'm actually gonna talk more about next week on how you can set that up in a healthy way. But limit your distractions because you don't wanna get derailed. If you have good positive energy, it can change so quick. The next is to take responsibility. <laughs> so take responsibility of your bad habits. Mine is reading the comment section. You can have other bad habits that drain your energy. Either they drain your energy or they make your energy negative, but that's what I face. So I'm on social media. I see the most beautiful moment, nicest thing. You go in the comment section. The top comment is always someone making the most out of something ridiculous. It's either them just saying something totally out of pocket or them reaching for something to complain about. If you read that comment, like me, <laughs> it can drag you down with them to that like weird energy level. So if you're like me, just enjoy, just enjoy. You don't need to see what people are saying about it, just enjoy it. You don't need to go to the comment section. This is on most social media now. I find it really hard to avoid. I find YouTube comments actually very positive. Facebook, mm, mm, don't go there. <laughs> Instagram is getting pretty bad, so I don't use TikTok anymore or Twitter for these reasons. If your bad habit is bringing you negative energy, you have to take responsibility. So every time I click that comment section, that's on me. 
It's not their fault, even though they really should get a better hobby. It's not their fault. I'm letting myself be dragged in with them. So take some responsibility of those bad habits and protect yourself and your energy. Pay attention to who you give your energy and your time to. If you have a lot of energy, you're ready for the fun day and you are spending it around people who are miserable or they're just not fitting you, it's gonna really drain you. And that is the biggest realization I've come to. I used to go out all the time and I would be like, there's always something, you know, there's always something that made it weird, awkward, uncomfortable, or drama. Lately, every time I go with people and I hang out with people and I plan trips, I never want it to end. I'll have this trip or this weekend or this day and I'll be like, wow, that was so amazing. It just kept getting better and better. And I didn't realize that that was an option because I was so used to being surrounded by the wrong people. So if you don't think that's an option, it is. Get yourself out of these toxic situations. It's not worth it. And finally, the last tip is to pay attention to what you consume. I'm talking about media, I'm talking about books, anything. It's okay to divulge in like sad TV. If you like dramatic sad TV, if you like true crime, if you like stuff like that, that has a little bit of negative energy, fine. But if that's all you're consuming, you will feel that. I can't watch Grey's Anatomy. I would watch that and it would just send me into a spiral. And again, this is gonna be different for everybody because everybody has different like temperaments and everybody has different, you know, levels. But for me, like that was draining me. Something as so small as the TV I was enjoying. Maybe you're not watching stuff for entertainment. You're constantly like listening to audiobooks about like self-help, listening to videos about self-help like this maybe. Maybe you're always doing courses. You're not actually consuming stuff for entertainment and then that's gonna drain your energy. So there's two risks there, right? If you go too far one way, you're gonna bring the negative energy. If you go too far the other way, you're gonna spend your positive energy. So. There's a lot to consider here. I hope this helps. If you have any other comments, questions, concerns, leave it in the comment section. Feel free to like and subscribe if you like me, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.